So let's look at an example that an engineer might face using psychrometric definitions. So in this case, it's an industrial dryer. It's operating at steady state. It's atmospheric air, 30 degrees C, one bar, 65% relative humidity. So something you might have gotten from outside during the summer. We're going to first heat this air to 120 degrees C at constant pressure. And then we're going to pass it over the material being dried, which is going to mean that it's going to pick up some moisture from this material being dried. So it's going to leave the driver at 80 degrees C1 bar with 30% relative humidity. And it's going to have added 250 kilograms per hour of moisture to it. So it's going to start at a 65% relative humidity, leave at a 30% relative humidity, yet have added water to the air. Okay. I want to figure out what's the mass flow rate of dry air that I need to feed into this dryer. And I need to figure out how much heat I need to add to the heating section in order to achieve this. Now we're going to neglect any kinetic and potential energy effects just to simplify things. And I need to figure out whether or not I want to solve this using equations and definitions or whether I want to use the psychrometric charts. Now I can use psychrometric charts if the temperature, or well, let's start with the pressure. If the pressure is at one atmosphere, one bar is close enough that most people would say, eh, go ahead. Okay, but those charts are only for atmospheric pressure. So I meet that condition, that's not a problem. But they're for temperatures that are what one might feel in the environment. So this one starts no problem, 30 degrees C, but it's going to go up to 120 degrees C. Now, we do not ever experience 120 degrees C in the weather, okay? So therefore, a psychrometric chart is not going to work for us in this case. So I need to use the equations. So let's just remind ourselves of the basic formulas that I'm going to be needing. So this is a slide from earlier. I'm going to have the definition of humidity, which is the mass of the water vapor per mass of air. And I can relate that to water va or vapor pressure, okay? The partial pressure of the water vapor to the partial pressure of the air, which is the total pressure minus the water partial pressure. And the relative humidity is the partial pressure of the water divided by the partial pressure if it were saturated. And this is the value that I could get from a steam table. When I need to do enthalpy calculations, I will use this. Okay, this is the definition of enthalpy of moist air. It's the enthalpy of the dry air that I could get from an ideal gas air table. And it's the enthalpy of the water vapor, which I'll estimate using saturated vapor, times the humidity ratio, or specific humidity, of the mixture. This will put it all on the same basis of a per kilogram of dry air. Okay, so these are the basic equations we need. Let's solve this problem. So I've drawn this so that I drew it as separate equipment. So it's a heater going from 30 degrees C, 0.65 relative humidity to a temperature of 120 degrees C. I don't know the relative humidity here. I will be adding heat at this stage. And then I'm going to add 250 kilograms per hour of water coming from the material I'm trying to dry. That's going to be added into this moist air to create moist air at 80 degrees C and 30% relative humidity. Now just one reminder, uh, when I use BDA, that is my way of saying that I want dry air. It's just simply shorter to type than dry air. So BDA stands for bone dry air. It's just kind of a, a old school engineering kind of term. Now I'm going to analyze first the heater. So in the heater, I have no mass changes. Whatever comes in, comes out. So therefore, the dry air mass that comes in is going to be the same that comes out, 
and the water vapor that comes in also comes out. That means that the humidity ratio, the specific humidity, at the inlet and the outlet to the heater will be exactly the same. So if I can calculate what that is, then I'll know it for both state 1 and state 2. Now, at 30 degrees C, I can find the vapor pressure of water. I use steam tables, and in your textbook it comes to 0.04246 bar. If you're using a different table, you'll get something slightly different, but very similar. I can use the definition of relative humidity to get the partial pressure of the water vapor. All right, so relative humidity is P sub V divided by P sub G. This is the saturation I get from the steam tables. This is the one that's going to tell me the amount of water in the air. So 0.65 times 0.04 uh, times the total pressure. No. Ah, OK. 0.65 times P sub G will get me P sub V. Y is this times the total pressure. So this is 2.76 mole percent water. If I want to find out what W is, well, then I can take the definition that 0.622 times P sub V divided by 1 minus P sub V, that is equal to W, the specific humidity. And so I have this value here. I can use this to calculate the humidity of the air at state 1 and state 2. At 30 degrees C, air has a specific enthalpy of 303.2 kilojoules per kilogram. At 120 degrees C, I found 393.91 kilojoules per kilogram. Water has 2556.3 at state 1. 2706.3 at state 2. This is saturated vapor water at those temperatures. Now these may in fact have a different basis. They may not have started at the same starting point, but because I'm doing subtraction, I'll see that it's not going to really make a difference in terms of the answers that I get, even if I do have a different basis for my tables. Now the amount of heat transfer required for the system, if there's no work, is the enthalpy change from inlet to outlet. So 93.36 kilojoules per kilogram of dry air. Of course, I can't really tell you how much heat transfer is required until I know the mass of dry air. So let's analyze the dryer. Now the dryer, you'll recall, had moist air coming in just plain water coming in and water coming or moist air coming out. I know the temperature here and I know the enthalpy, I know the humidity. This is a well-defined stream. This stream is also well-defined. It's 80 degrees C and 30 percent relative humidity which means I could do similar calculations and this is a well-defined stream. This one it's water, but honestly, I don't really have data that's very good about what temperature it is or anything. I should probably assume maybe it's like 80, but I don't know, and I don't need that. Now, just to look at this particular problem, what I can do is I can do a mass balance or I can do an energy balance. A mass balance says, well, if I look at the mass of water, coming in, just following the water, the mass of the air times the humidity in stream 2 plus the mass of water in stream 4 will be the amount of water in stream 3, which is the mass of air times the humidity of the stream 3. This actually is going to be the one that's going to allow me to solve for mass of air. It is a mass balance on water, and it's going to allow me to solve for the mass of air because humidity is mass of air, water per mass of air. Now, if I were to do an energy balance, this would be what I would find because if my dryer is adiabatic, no heat lost, no heat gained, and there is no work, then this would be my energy balance. But sadly, 
I can't tell you what h sub 4 is equal to. So let's use the mass balance. <clears throat> the mass balance, I'm going to be looking for m sub a. I have omega 2. I have m4. I need it, omega 3. So omega 3 is going to be found using the vapor pressure, the steam tables, at 80 degrees C. So 30% relative humidity, so this gets me the partial pressure of the water vapor. <clears throat> and again, I can use the definition of humidity, and I find that it's 0 0.103 kilograms of water per kilogram of dry air. Now this is, M4 was given as 24, or 250, and so I can solve for M sub A is going to be M sub 4 divided by W3 minus W2, coming up with 2,926 kilograms of dry air per hour are required as feed. I also showed you here that I could calculate the enthalpy at state 3. I could use this to calculate the enthalpy at state 4 using the energy balance, which would allow me to find T4 if I were interested. It's not what I'm going after, but just so you can see some of the things that we might be able to do using this information and these definitions. Okay, thank you for watching this example.